Nintendo struck gold when they developed The Legends of Zelda way back in 1986. Their fantasy adventure series would later become one of the gaming's legendary hallmarks. 35 odd years later, The Legend of Zelda continues to set the gold standard and gains the world's attention with every subsequent release. Despite this legendary series offering well over a dozen classic games, only 10 can fit in a handful of favourites. And with that said, we've dived through the archives of Metacritic to find the top 10 Legends of Zelda games, ranging all the way back to its first release up until present day. Please also do keep in mind that ports, remasters, and collections that are featured in the site's top 10 are omitted. Just before we do get into the video though, if you do like this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and of course, like the video. We do also stream over on Twitch, I will leave all the links within the description box below. And with all that said, let's get into our list. Number 10, Minish Cap. Minish Cap was the first original single-player Zelda game on the Game Boy Advance. Using the cell-shredded art style from Four Swords and Wind Waker, this took Link to the Land of Bikori. While featuring the 2D gameplay familiar to a Link to the Past fans, the new twist came with the ability to shrink into a tiny being. While Minish Cap was beautiful and charming, it was also short and fairly easy. Even though once normal-sized enemies could become giants against Minish Link, it provided for some entertaining boss battles. Despite only six dungeons and not terribly challenging boss fights, Minish Cap offered incredibly fun areas to explore and some epic new sword techniques. Number 9, Phantom Hourglass. Link's debut on the Nintendo DS offered a stylus-only control scheme. Set after Wind Waker, this story entails Link and Tetra's journey to discover a new Hyrule. Using the stylus, Link will explore the oceans, chart sea routes, make a map, and even solve puzzles. Phantom Hourglass did not offer the most immersive innovation, with fairly standard weapons and combat. The DS's screen and stylus did however offer a new level of innovation, plus it introduced charming characters such as Celia and Linebeck to the series. Number 8, A Link Between Worlds. This sequel to a glorious A Link of the Past, A Link Between Worlds, took place in the same realm but a different era. Featuring a dark world, Link also gained the ability to become a drawing. This allowed him to slip through cracks, as well as flatten himself up against walls in order to solve puzzles. This near-perfect and polished adventure recreated the best parts of his predecessor while innovating at the same time. It played the park of throwback to the SNES, while introducing new fans to the best of 2D Zelda. A Link Between Worlds managed to culminate into an unforgettable adventure with strategic puzzles, noteworthy world designs, and perhaps the best ending in the series. Number 7, Skyward Sword. When Nintendo released Skyward Sword for the Wii, it became the first original mainline Zelda game to debut on the system. As Twilight Princess was initially a GameCube title, the Wii version did not yet implement the one-to-one -one motion control. Skyward Sword's ability to interact with the Wii Remote allowed players to slash at multiple angles. This led to Nintendo utilizing creative battle mechanics against powerful opponents. Skyward Sword took place at the beginning of the entire Hyrule Saga. It introduced the goddess Hylia, the demon demise, and the origins of the Hyrule Kingdom. Many of these elements, including the Master Sword Spirit, Fee would later appear in Hyrule Warriors. Number 6, A Link to the Past. While the Game Boy Advance version made it into Metacritic's top 10, largely due to the time release window, it is otherwise a near direct port of the NES masterpiece. A Link to the Past featured an incredibly large size inventory menu and the largest dungeon count in the series. What made A Link to the Past so special was its high level of world building at the time. This not only included fleshing out Hyrule, but also included its counterpart the Dark World as well. A Link to the Past completely overhauled the 2D gameplay of the original NES Legend of Zelda. It would later set the foundation for the storylines of future games, as well as the gameplay for Link's Awakening, Oracles, Minish Cap, and A Link Between Worlds. Number 5, Majora's Mask. Released two years after Nintendo's colossal success, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask took Link to the world of Termina. Set as a parallel world to Hyrule, it was in danger of being destroyed by a moon within three days' time. Link had to gain masks, master the ocarina, and solve people's troubles in order to stop Majora's Mask from destroying the world. Majora's Mask was developed in only six months, and was the series producer, E.G. Awanuma's first game as lead. However, the dark turns that it took stuck out in the memory of many Zelda fans. Majora's Majora's Mask became renowned for tugging heartstrings in a way that the series has never since. Number 4, Twilight Princess. After the cell shaded Wind Waker, fans demanded a return to form the way of the Nintendo 64 titles. Twilight Princess's E3 2004 debut sent shockwaves through the convention and the internet as many fans rejoiced over the seeming return for the series and adult Link. 
Twilight Princess, introduced Link's wolf transformation, as well as the snooty princess sidekick, Midna. Featuring a darker and heavier tone than the past games, Hyrule was in danger of being consumed by the Twilight Realm. At the time, it became the largest adventure in the series as well. Note that this GameCube and Wii title also did receive a remaster on the Wii U. Number 3, The Wind Waker. Originally, the Wind Waker cell shader graphics did not receive a warm reception. The cartoonish style took a complete 180 from the shonen anime style featured in the Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Despite this, however, Wind Waker became an immense success. Wind Waker evolved on Ocarina of Time's combat by adding attack combos and parrying. The animations were truly one of a kind and has aged phenomenally. Wind Waker would later receive a full-scale remaster on the Wii U, which featured updated visuals and quality of life improvements. Number 2, Breath of the Wild. Nintendo shattered expectations when they showcased the Switch. Their latest piece of hardware was set to showcase incredible visuals, and with that, a new Zelda game to launch the system. The gorgeous cell shaded title took the animation and colors of Wind Waker and melded it with the style players loved in Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Breath of the Wild became known for being one of the first full console Zelda experiences that could be played on a handheld system. Roughly 100 hours in length, this challenging title included 120 mini dungeons and tons of quests to tackle before entering Hyrule Castle to save the world once again. This beautiful adventure included full voice acting, tons of lore and some of the most emotional moments in the series. And number 1, Ocarina of Time. Nintendo's standards for Zelda games is the one everyone remembered which redefined gaming as we know it. Ocarina of Time's 3D gameplay, combat, day and night system, and button matting feature elements were well ahead of its time. Every 3D Zelda title later was always compared to the Ocarina of Time. The measuring stick of this series built the world of Hyrule, featured an incredibly polished gameplay, and included numerous side quests. The 3D remake featured faster frame rates, perfected visuals, a boss rush mode, and even the Master Quest version, which was once exclusive to a Nintendo GameCube's bonus disc. Perhaps one day players might yet see another re-release. And so there you pretty much have it, that was the top 10 Zelda games as officially ranked by Metacritic. So what did you think of the list? Did you think that there were any titles missing? Or perhaps you think there's a game on the list that shouldn't have been included? Be sure to leave it in the comment section below, I would love to hear it. And of course, if you do like this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and of course, like the video. If you would like to see some more top 10s, I will leave more videos at the end in the annotations. Thanks very much for watching guys and I will see you all next time.